Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to D.G. Will's Books in La Jolla, California. Tonight we're honored to have legendary drummer Charles Connor here to discuss his new book, Keep a Knockin', The Story of a Legendary Drummer. Let me just say something briefly about him. There's the new book. Charles Keep a Knockin' Connor, original drummer for Little Richard, created the unique choo-choo train style of successive eighth notes with a loud backbeat used by nearly all subsequent rock and roll drummers. His, drum six, his drumsticks are now on display at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. In 1956, Little Richard's band appeared in several popular feature films, including The Girl Can't Help It uh, with actress Jane Mansfield. Then, as rock and roll exploded on the music scene, the band recorded several hit songs like uh, uh, Keep a Knockin', featuring Connor's first four-bar drum intro on a rock and roll record, Oh My Soul, also featuring Connor's distinctive choo-choo train beat, and She's Got It with a regular backbeat. When Little Richard uh, temporarily reti uh, retired for the ministry in 1957, uh, legendary performer Sam Cooke uh, took over the Upsetters uh, band, and, and Connor Charles again toured the United States. During breaks between bookings, uh, Connor toured with other talented artists like James Brown, Jackie, William, uh, uh, Jackie Wilson, Lloyd Price, the original Coasters, and Big Joe Turner. He recorded with uh, champion Jack Dupree, Larry Williams, Don, Don Kobe, Papa George Lightfoot, uh, Christine C uh, uh, Cottrell, Larry Birdsong, and Dee Clark. Um, Charles Connor was inducted into the Louisiana Music Hall of Fame, joining a list of other illustrious honorees, including Lil Richard, uh, Louis Armstrong, Fats Domino, and Jerry Lee Lewis. Connor will be featured in a 2015 documentary minis miniseries for BBC TV, exploring the genesis, explosion, and legacy of rock and roll in America. He would also be joining other notable music legends, such as Paul McCartney, B.B. King, Elton John, and Brian, Brian Wilson, and more, in an upcoming PBS documentary miniseries airing in early 2016. This will explore the extraordinary influence of recorded music in the modern world. It was James Brown who, who, who used to say that uh, Charles Connor was the first drummer to put the funk into the rhythm. Into the rhythm, ladies and gentlemen, legendary drummer Charles Keep a Knock and Connor. Thank you. Thank you. Dennis, thank you for having me, and I want to uh, thank for coming out. Thank for buying the book. And I really appreciate that. But I want to tell you one thing. My wife is, is an Ida Khan. I met her when she was a little girl in the Philippines, and we got, we've been married 33 years. I was married to little Richard's sister first, and I married my wife, Sonata. She's bad for it, so don't, you know. Uh, and then uh, my daughter, Queenie, my beautiful daughter, Santa Queenie. Don't be bad. <laughs> My daughter Queen is my publicist and also my personal manager, and she really is the uh, brand behind my talent. And I would like to introduce Queenie, a uh, handsome boyfriend. <laughs> oh, y'all do, y'all do, yeah. He's in the, he's in the music business too, he's an editor and a producer and all that stuff, you know. That's a fiance, and they're going to be married soon. I'm very proud of them, and I'm proud of her, you know. And uh, you guys have any questions? Yes, I have a question, Charles. Yes, yes sir. Uh, there was a time when, when, when Little Richard got so angry at a particular event, and I can't remember the specifics, they're in the book. Uh, I mean, I th I'm thinking of an earlier episode when you were a child and you, uh, and you, and you drank, uh, there, were two water, there were two water coolers. Oh, yeah. One for for coloreds and one for whites. Yeah. Uh, you drank the water out of the white. Uh, or you, at first, you drank it out of the out Color. of the colored, and yes, it was sir. lukewarm. And you, yes, you drank sir. the water out of the one for whites, and yes, it was sir. really cold. Yeah. And, and uh, I think your mother was. I don't know. Uh, she tried to cover that. But what I mainly want to ask you about is incidents of racism that you experienced in the South, especially the episode when Little Richard got really pissed off. And he took all you guys and said, let's get the hell out of here. Oh, yeah, he did. And a lot of plays we played with the KKK. Didn't want the clue to play. Didn't want to play. You see them hoods, man. Don't play that. Cancel that dick. And the thing about that is uh, 
a lot of places we played where they didn't want us to play. A lot of places we played uh, that uh, we had to go into the back door. Now we and we uh, we planned for these people and everything, and they want us to go to the back door. But this, they still wouldn't enjoy the music. Now back there, those days they would have uh, concert, one for uh, African American for color, and one for white. So the um, the uh, they would have the the, the first concert for for the white kids one night and a second concert for the black kids and then but the white kids would come to the black kids concert too as spectators and they would jump down on a dance floor and start dancing with the black kids and the police would stop them. Now you can remember I was younger than myself, 20, 21, those kids were around my age, 18, 19, 20 years old. They're my age now but they started that because they, 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 they uh they, they, they wanted a change and everything. They didn't want to, uh, uh, they, they, they liked that energy and stuff, and they liked the way the color kids uh, were, 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 were dancing and stuff like that, you know? I was in Mississippi one time, and had a boy in Mississippi. He said, come here, Charles. Now, I'm not talking about, no, she, come here, Charles. I ain't talking about you, but she said, um, why, are you, why are you black kids uh, so happy and you don't have nothing? When you're dancing, I say, well, we just got the spirit, and yes, it's, it's a natural thing. You know, we, we just got the spirit to dance and everything, you know? And she said, well, I understand, but I don't think she really understood what I was talking about, you know? We went through a lot of stuff, man, like dressing and acting like a bunch of gay guys and stuff like that. We used to go in, in the club, club the order to them, and guys would, uh, would uh, pat you on the butt. One guy would pat me on that. He pat me on my behind. He was a little richer than his sister. One guy pat, pat me on the behind. And I know his girlfriend had eyes for me. And she went first, you know. And, uh, and he said, here's a little yeah, that's the drum. He said, that's the rich one, rich faggots. You know, he pat me on the butt. And I told the guitar player, uh-huh, you might call me a faggot. But at intermission, I'll be banging you in the dressing room. <laughs> so we went into all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? But uh, 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 we really, if it wasn't for Little Richard, it wouldn't be, there wouldn't have been a Michael Jackson or, uh, or, uh, or uh, Prince, people like that. We're the one that paved the road for those people, man, for to get out there and let them get used to seeing a black entertainer and stuff like that. I mean, Jan Brown, you know? You know, I mean, Jan Brown, Little Richard was working from the same town and everything, you know, they had the same book in Macon, Georgia. But we really picked, we call it hell. And uh, the musician that did some of the recording behind Richard, they were studio musician. They was comfortable smoking their little pot at breaks when they at the intermission and everything and air conditioning air conditioning studio. We were out there paying our dues, man. Charles, I don't want to hog the questions, but on this same theme, there was a particularly ugly episode. I don't know if it was Oklahoma, it was a dry state, and you didn't have any booze. So you found someone a cab, a cab driver who took you out uh, Oklahoma, to Oklahoma, Oklahoma, City. Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. Yeah. And you went out to get some whist, some moonshine or something. Yeah. And there was some cracker who had, but he wouldn't even, he used, you know, I, I know yeah. what word you put, you you, you did that word, yeah. Yeah, you did, you put that word in there. Yeah. Uh, but, and he wouldn't even give it to you. He gave yeah. it to the cab driver. That son of a bitch. Yeah. He, he wouldn't even, that must have been. And we were famous. They didn't want to give us a cab driver that stuff like that. So, yeah. It would be so goddamn irritating. It was something. Yeah, but you, you know, because you, you had a hundred bucks. Yeah. You wanted to buy some booze, and yeah. the guy wouldn't even give you yeah. the booze. He gave it to the white cabbie. That's right. Yeah. That's what right. What the yeah. hell? You yeah. But that's the way it was those days. But uh, like I'm saying, uh, I had no hatred. My parents taught me not to hate. I shouldn't hate. You know, you, but that's way before Walter Luther get rid of my mother. When I was little, say, no, Charles, don't hate anyone. Don't hate. And when I used to tell the guy, I say, oh, can we be uh, treated like that down south? But I say, when we come to California, we'll be, we'll be a little more freer. When we go on the East Coast, Midwest, we go overseas. Free. And some guy said, uh, oh, man, Charles, always preaching. He only always preaching, man. This big man always told me to be better. I said, it's going to be better. And I mean, with all due respect, a couple of those guys, uh, one or two of those guys that say, hey, man, you always preaching, they don't get better. Those guys, he said, we're good musicians, we composed it, we arrange everything. A bunch of the guys got disgusted and <laughs> overdosed. Oh, uh, also, uh, to roast the liver. They gave up. 
But you got, as you in Mississippi, Alabama, in those days, you act like it's poor tax. I mean, you're not going to be in there all your life. So, you, you I mean, you, two or three days, you go to Philadelphia, or Baltimore, or Boston, or New York, and all the place. Things will get better. I always believe that things are going to get better. I believe in praying and things, that things are going to get better. And, I mean, we're not completely, uh, I mean, everything is not everything cool, but it's, it's, it's much better than it was. Question from Steve Chappell from the San Diego Union Tribune. Boy, this is for two weeks, oh. and the Greyhound bus station on 5th Street, across from the Dulles State. The Dulles State is now a museum, a music museum. He used to wash dishes, and Richard came back after he made two to food with his big 1956 Cadillac, like he said. Uh, I can buy that bus station. <laughs> but that was the only place and uh, they didn't have no African-American cafes up in Macon, Georgia. They had a little, you know, little, little hole in the wall and stuff like that. That was the only place we could get a decent meal and condition at the ground bus station. We used to go, on, go down Sundays, you know. And uh, But Richard did used to wash dishes, you know. Yeah. Did he hear the song on the radio, as the legend goes? Yeah. And then get on the bus and go out to LA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Rick Richard won, he got recognized, he won the Horace Hype show at Horace Hype show. I'm a little too young, I'm too, I wasn't uh, under, uh, old enough to understand the Horace, but he won the, the Horace Hype show, you know. But Richard was also playing, Richard, Richard was also playing with a group called the Temple Toppers. Temple Toppers, he was, a, he was one of the lead singers. And what happened was, um, he said, someday I'm going to add my own band. It happened like that with every group. You're with a group, you say, I want to have my own band someday. And, and do it like I want to do it. One Direction, that's the group, One Direction, and all those uh, boy band, they turn out they had their own groups and things like that. Because they want to do their own thing. Cause y you get tired of, uh, of uh, being around. Travel. We were on a road like 11 months out of a year. You get tired of being around your, your brother musicians all the time. You want your own, you want to do your own thing. Once you have confidence and you learn, you know, you really learn the business, you know. So I had Charles Connor and the West Coast Upsetter. But I said, I want it all. Uh, I don't want all African American in my band. I had a guy named, he was, he was African American. Uh, Egyptian, his name was Osama or Fifi. The bass player. <laughs> I had two Jewish guys in my band. I had uh, one. I had one girl from Argentina, Latina, and I had another girl from East Los Angeles. I had a guy. I had an Asian guy in my band. I had a different. I wanted. I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to have a mixture. Yeah. You know that's what I always wanted to do because back then. Was, but I had that opportunity to do that when I came out here. Because down south, black and white couldn't play together. Yeah. And, and then the New Orleans sound, I mean... Yeah, New Orleans. So you're drumming. Oh yeah, New Orleans. Oh, all that come from the second line. That's come from the yeah. second line. That's, uh, uh, that, you know, I demonstrate that come from the second line. Like, when the Saints go marching, that's the spirit of New Orleans. That came from the second line. Began. Oh, when the Saints... Too, when you play New Orleans music, you got a personality but when you hear New Orleans. You notice the way I'm, what I'm doing, I'm showing off, it's an ego thing. Oh, when I'm proud. That's you call that soul. If you know, if, if, if you are uh, seeing the Richard movie, all Richard movies, or uh, the girl can don't like the rock. And uh, when when Richard was, uh, you know, Richard got that uh, the lyric when he say, "I saw Uncle Johnny duck back in the alley." If you notice in the movie what I was doing when he say, "If you when you see the movie again, I mean it's on video." He said, "I saw Uncle Johnny duck back in the alley." 
everybody. He doesn't look at it. In that movie, I'm ducking. I'm doing that. Pay attention. It, it, it's in the technical of little jam. Matthew, a girl can't help it. But all that, New Orleans attitude, New Orleans pride, and that African Caribbean style, and you know, you got to feel it. I mean, you, you just don't, you just don't play like this, like you don't have no soul. Like, like, a, like, a, look, I'm a robot. That's for symphony orchestra. But I like, uh, I like that too. Music, you know, you know, everybody got soul. All nationalities have soul, uh, but we just kind of exaggerated more, you know, from being, uh, you know, Caribbean and Africa and all that stuff, African American. All. But we all, we all have soul. Everybody has soul, you know. Any other question? What's the second line? What was the first line? The second, the first line. I'm glad you smart, you. <laughs> What's your name, ma'am? Didi. Didi. Okay, Didi. That's a good question. Very few people ask me that question. The first line is when you, you have the dead body, all that's funeral. You, know, you, 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 you bring the body to the graveyard and you're playing, you're playing slow. Uh, what a story we have in the that's the first line. But when they come from the graveyard, they want to go back to the church or where the dead person home was buried and they want to walk fast back there. So they pick up the temple because they want to eat that fried chicken, gumbo, red and green and rice off. So they rush back and half of them be high in that way because they be a dick little flat. So the second line is, like I said, the second line is, uh, well, I'm wearing the same. The second line, I think they got a uh, they got an intro and a bass drum, but they get all the musicians together, and it's it, the fast domino on one of his records. Uh, the intro it go like this: the bass drum always thought of. The bass drum always thought of, to get the musician for the head, the uh, the horn, and the, you know with the drum and all that stuff. It's always featured that bass drum, you know. I played a lot of great entertainment, and I told him when I started playing. I never auditioned for anyone. The only one I auditioned for, I never auditioned for Professor Longhead from you know, Monica God Dick. And I say, I'm going to play the structure of the song, but can I do my own stuff too? Can I do my own, live my own style? Because I'm going to put that New Orleans, New Orleans flavor. I'm going to put that red bean and rice and gumbo and fried chicken and okra and, all, and watermelon in mine. I want to put that in my music. You know? And say, that's okay. Say, long as you play the structure of the song, and I mean, I was fortunate enough, man. Those guys, uh, 
uh, they put up with me with a lot of tough shit. I, I, I say, man, just let me do my, my thing, you know, everything, you know, I, 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 just let me do uh, uh, the way I want to do it. And they say, okay, I played the structure of the song, I played the intro right, when the solo came, the intro and the solo and the ending, everything was right there. But I have to put my little thing in there, you know, it's an ego thing, but it, you got to be bold when you try to be original, man. You know, you got to be bold. You know, what's going to happen to you if you're not bold? What the worst thing can happen to you? What the worst thing can happen to you? You're not going to die hard or you know, have a heart attack. You ask yourself that. Not that for music. If you're an actress or actor. And guys say, man, I seen you play in front of, uh, I mean, like uh, uh, 25 and 30,000 people. And what happened is, uh, I don't see, I don't see any people out there look like, look like wall, wall people. Flowers of all people, you know. But and and then when we play in little places like clubs, always watch and watch the place and that. Now you when you're playing music, you're a musician. This is an individual thing, my thing. You don't want you don't want to be a guy looking at you, look like that. What the hell are you doing? You want a guy? You want a place looking at you that that's peppy and I mean enjoying the music and stuff like that, you know. And uh, I had guys, the drummers, look at me, and they, uh, 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 they, they were their beautiful girlfriend and things like that, and they leave their girlfriend, they look like going down, and they watch. I like that, because I'm being respected. They enjoy the music and stuff like that. And they look at you, yeah. and they're shaking their head and stuff like that. They stand at the lip of the bandstand, in front of the bandstand, and look at you. That's good, man. I like that attention. I like that kind of attention. You know, but when the police looking at you like that, <laughs> what the hell they're doing, you know? You don't want that. You want father that. You know what you do? A lot of, and that's why the audience should get uh, a lot of credit. You could be a great entertainer, a great musician, but you actually get your energy from the audience. The entertainer don't tell you that little secret. You get the in, you get the energy from the audience because when the audience enjoy what you're doing, uh, you could be a better performer. You know, when they're doing stuff like that. But if you got a if you got a thousand people, man, in the room, man, and they're looking at you, who in the hell is this guy? You know, <laughs> you, you, you lose your confidence, lose your energy. You gotta have a boost. You know. And even when I stopped drinking, I stopped drinking 45 years ago. I even with alcohol for many years. I stopped drinking about 45 years ago. And the thing about that is uh, when I play, I, 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 I uh, depend on the crowd. My, it helped my endorphins. You know what I mean? But that's natural. That's natural. Uh, uh, and musicians have to have something. For the going to bandstand, you got to, you just can't. Okay, you're playing Omaha, Nebraska, or South Dakota, or North Dakota, or, or wherever, you know, and it's cold. Man, you can't go behind them drums. The symbol's cold, it's cold in the auditorium. People out there with old coats on, everything cold. You got to have something to boost you up. That's why a lot of people, musicians, get on drugs and stuff like that, you know? That's why I thought of drinking and stuff like that. We play uh, South Dakota, North Dakota, and a place like that, and Omaha, Nebraska, and uh, Hartford, Connecticut, where co up State, New York. It'd be cold, man. So I said, before I go on a band, thing, I'm going to take me up. But the only thing about music, drummers, when you're playing drum and when you're drinking, you sweat it all out. <laughs> you go back in the hotel, man, you get drunk, you smell your clothes. But Richard had two uniforms for every uniform other guy take. I was sweat it out, man. You know, you sweat that alcohol out. Smell bad, I mean, you know, when you smell like alcohol, smell bad it's alcohol, you know. But you got to have something to boost you. You can't, I imagine, you ain't got to be no musician. Can you, every, who, who, everybody got a job in this room, working? Can you, can you go to work and you mess with the computer and talk about with a cold glass of ice water? That don't motivate you. You got to have your coffee, caffeine, right? <laughs> Some people don't. Some people don't. Some people don't have. Uh, 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 they can't hold a conversation unless they have. I gotta have my first cup of coffee. 
everybody on some sort of a drug, you know. I mean, you, <laughs> you got to have something to boot you up and stuff like that, you know. You said you love me. 